Hi, football fans, and welcome to another edition of Inside Tiger Football. I'm Dan Hawk, joined by head coach Josh Blankenship. We're going to break down the offense and defense and get set for Westmore. Coach, just dive right into this matchup with Norman North. Cooper Bates on a fake touchdown kind of threw me off guard a little bit up in the mm-hmm. booth. But just tell me about the fantastic play call there and able to see the offense rolling with that on that fake play. Uh, it's something we've worked the last three years. It's uh, it's kind of an easy fake because if they see the guy over there, um, then we just you know put put the protector back in and kick the field goal. So it was uh, it's kind of an easy call to just it's a check with me type of deal. See if they give it to us. Um, they gave it to us, and uh, you know obviously it, we executed. Uh, Keaton Johnson threw a good ball to Coop, who was wide open, and he got to take it in and. Uh, biggest thing on the decision was we. I felt like we just needed a spark. Something you know. Sometimes you feel like you gotta almost manufacture something to get the get the confidence going. And uh, we started playing a little better on offense from that point up until the half. But uh, yeah, it was a good spark. Break down the trick plays for me. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. want you to go into detail and reveal any secrets. But h- how often do you guys work on these types of things? Is yeah. it just a look? And then could could we see Keaton maybe be a quarterback someday? <laughs> Uh, Keaton can throw it uh, you know that's a that's a perk you know you always kind of have in your back pocket the the guys that can throw it you know it kind of opens up the uh, the creative juices a little bit on on the gadgets or the trick plays but no we usually carry a few a week um, a lot of times they'll carry over you know week to week if we don't use them um, sometimes they're very specific for an opponent you know something we know that that is effective against them sometimes they're just gadget plays that you know if you just catch them sleeping they're going to be good um, that's always been part of, of what we are, um, you know, not only on offense, but we had a couple other things on special teams that we were ready to use if, if we needed them and we never got to them. Um, probably could have used the spark, but they mm-hmm. didn't present themselves. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that keeps, it keeps it fun, you know, especially when you introduce a new one, the kids get a kick out of it. And, uh, um, and then if you use them at the right time and you execute them, then it can really be a spark. The cool thing about trick plays is they're either really, really good and they work successfully, mm-hmm. or sometimes you're just scratching your head because it didn't, you know, pan out. But mm-hmm. I'm guessing the biggest thing, like you said, is a confidence booster. When you run these plays in practice, what are they like for the kids? Uh, it's fun. I mean, it's it's pretty normal, so they don't really feel like trick plays to us. They're just a little, you know, little wrinkle on something we do already. You know, they're already built in. Um, in, a, in some sense, you know, like, a, you know, a double pi- pass might be off of, of something that's already an RPO that we throw on a regular basis. Um, you know, so it's, it's usually built in and tied into something that's very fundamental to what we do. And then the kids get, get a kick out of it when you say, all right, now I want you to throw it and instead of going to get the first down here and you're going to protect it and then you're going to sell that you're blocking for the RPO and then take off and you know, it's just built in kids, kids enjoy it. It's really not even a big deal. You know, it's just part of of what we do is is there's a couple of gadgety wrinkle things that we have. Um, sometimes you build them into your red zone package. Sometimes you build them into your two point plays. Um, sometimes you build them into field goal. Um, you know, and then then you got a little bit more freedom once it's installed of when you use it, and that could change week to week. But uh, the kids are used to it. It's 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 fun, but it's not a big deal. Cabri Harris almost a hundred yard mm-hmm. game on the ground and impressive. Uh, six and a half yards per carry. I mean, he he feels like he's coming into his own right now in the backfield. I mean, how special has he become? And because you're going to need him down this stretch of these districts. No question. Uh, Cabry's so special, and I'm so glad we have him. Uh, He creates a lot more sometimes than than is even there. Um, You know, we had a a new group up front that we've talked about, you know, since we started. But then even recently with some injuries, we've had two, uh, two starters down on the left side. Um, so we had two new guys in at the left side, and uh, they did a great job of stepping up and being ready and, and battling. Um, but Cabry being patient with with what he has to work with and um, an underrated defense for Norman North, I uh, thought they've really played well. Um, their number nine, their defensive end, really gave us fits all game and really disrupted a lot of things we were trying to do in the run game and then in pass protection. Um, but Cabry was our offensive player of the game. He's becoming that steady workhorse. Uh, he and Coop are really the two leaders of that group that we really feel like we lean on week in and week out, and then we try to expand the game plan you know, from those two. Coach, let's take a quick time out. On the other side, we'll break down the defensive performance against Norman North. Remember, Inside Tiger Football is brought to you by Rib Grid. Tulsa Bone & Joint, Northeast Oklahoma's sports medicine experts. We are pleased to help you and the athletes in your life with a number of surgical and non-surgical options. Tulsa Bone & Joint is proud to serve as team orthopedist for local high schools such as Broken Arrow, Owasso, Sepulpa, 
Tasha Hall and Bishop Kelly. We're also proud to be team orthopedists for FC Tulsa. Tulsa Bone & Joint, moving life forward. <laughs> Your side hustle keeps you moving. We'll help you get where you really want to go. <laughs> TTCU Federal Credit Union, life is better in balance. <laughs> And welcome back to Inside Tiger Football. I'm your host, Dan Hawk. Alongside me is head coach Josh Blankenship. We're going to break down the defensive performance against Norman North. Coach, uh, pen penalties were minimal mm -hmm. against Norman North. And I know this is something that you guys try to hammer every single week. But when you see when the numbers come out and you look at the stats and, and to get set for the next contest, when you look at that, I mean, how impressed are you to see that your, your defense played sound football? Uh, after that first quarter, we played great defense. Um, uh, really seeing a lot of progress with those guys. Um, we were unsettled when we started the game. We did some, a couple of really silly, unsound things that uh, they took advantage of. You know, that first play uh, from Norman North, uh, you know, a little zone read. Uh, we kind of panicked and bit hard on the, uh, on the running back, uh, even though we knew the main threat was the quarterback and worked it all week. And that quarterback can go. He exposed us, had a big, long run, and uh, it took us a little bit there in the first quarter to settle down, but once we did, man, they uh, really bowed up against a, you know what I think is you know if, if not the best offense over there, one of the best offenses on the west side, and uh, so really pleased with how we we settled down and played on defense. Two weeks in a row, you have to deal with a quarterback that's only a sophomore. So I know the game tape that you're mm -hmm. looking at, there's not much on on film on him. So how how do you cycle it all through to dive in on what you need to contain? Uh, well, I mean, you've got all the game film from this this year so far. Um, so you got about four games. Uh, you trade three, but a lot of times you get a little crossover from opponents that you've already had film on that you played early. Um, so we knew what we were we were dealing with and going up against. Um, you know, it's the same team that we played last year um, at Norman North, and they they really got hot and had a great year last year. Uh, six killer, their quarterback last year was really kind of the front runner of that group. Uh, really set the pace for him. He got hurt at the end of the season. And then Eshelman, the kid that we just saw, uh, went in and finished the season for him. And they didn't really skip a beat. They they went the last couple games with him leading it. Um, almost won, a, I think it was against Owasso in their playoff game in the quarterfinals. Uh, had a chance to win that and weren't, weren't able to pull it off. But we're very aware of who that kid was. And uh, he's a prototype of the kid that he replaced. Um, can sling it. Um, very long, tall, and athletic. Can run. Uh, so we knew what we were we were going to face and, and prepared well for it. And then honestly played well outside of the beginning of the game this Timberwolf team they didn't break 100 yards through the air they were very mm -hmm. heavy on the ground I mean did you have that mindset going into the game and and how did you feel that your team did responding to that uh I thought they uh complete a little bit more um you know they're very effective in the past game he, the quarterback throws it really well they've got a ginormous offensive line that that obviously run blocks well but they pass pro form really well as well Oh, really well also um, they've got a couple of receivers that that are uh, definite threats and I thought we did a great job in the back end that back end has been of ours has been uh, uh, the group that we've been kind of waiting to come along um, and they really had one of their better games if not their best game Tyree Taylor another yep. big game I knew you kind of wanted to touch on him a little bit that's why I highlighted him here I mean how mm -hmm. special has he been, been in the secondary for you guys uh, man he was battling some injury early uh, which was disappointing because with that young group he he's kind of the the vocal leader back there he's kind of the quarterback that that communicates better than anybody about where to line up recognizing the formations that he's seeing coming out of the huddle or tempo and um, having him back there's a really really nice security blanket because you know you got a leader that's going to get everybody where they're supposed to be Coach, let's take a quick time out. We're going to head into Westmore as we travel on the road. We'll break their a matchup down. Coming up on the other side on Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Grit. <laughs> Racing towards the end of the month? Ask about our early pay options. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. For families who like to build their wealth while staying liquid, we have flexible rate CDs to keep your funds working hard, even when you're not. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. The right balance. 
As we continue inside Tiger football, brought to you by Rip Grip, and we are now joined by senior linebacker Lane Condry. Lane, I know you've been unable to play this season so far, so tell me about how you were recovering with your leg injury. I'm, you know, going to PTA every day, just trying to get a little bit better at a time, you know, doing the best as I can, best that I can. I know you become a uh, weight room warrior, <laughs> so to speak. You know, tell me about how the workouts have been going because. It's not looking like you're going to be able to come back this season, but you're going to up your weight a ton through this Mm -hmm. whole process. Break it all down for me. What is the weight room like for you these days? You know, just hitting all upper body, trying to get the back and the neck uh, nice and strong, you know, so help with concussions next year when I'm playing college. I don't know, it'll just help me. You've got Air Force, Army, and Central Arkansas on tap for you that has given mm-hmm. you an offer. Uh, first off, congratulations. Thank uh, you. How do you go through this whole process? I mean, break it down mind-wise, because I know you want to be out there playing on Fridays, Thursday nights, you know, whatever night that we play Tiger football. But, you know, how do you keep that mind right and focused on your next journey, which will be college? You know, just uh, keeping my head straight, you know, um, just seeing what my opportunities are, you know, the best opportunity I can get to wherever I can play. For you, you you've kind of molded in. You're still a captain, mm-hmm. but you're molding in teaching these younger guys out on the football field. Mm-hmm. How much do you take pride in that? And then just with the idea of teaching these younger players that will carry on the tradition that you carried on for such a long time. Yeah, I'm, you know, being out, it kind of sucks, but. You know, I'm I'm still part of the team, so I try to help my team as much as possible. You know, even at practice, like helping out my linebackers, you know, teaching them. And uh, even in games, I'm up in the box, uh, communicating, writing, charting plays and stuff, you know, all that fun stuff. For you, I know education is very, very important to you. Uh, what is your goals and dreams of what you want to do outside the game of football? I'm thinking about majoring in business. You know, I'm, I haven't gotten too deep about education the educational part just getting healthy is what i've been mainly focused on how how much fun i to what you can do how much fun are you having this season i know i know you want to play but mm-hmm. like there's still a purpose on what you're doing right now i mean how much fun are you doing everything that you're doing right now in the weight room you know it, it's really fun you know seeing the progression throughout the three weeks that i've been hurt and lifting it's been fun and watching my guys play and trying to help them it's been fun when the uh, the rest of the squad gets in the weight room. Mm-hmm. Have they noticed like, wow, Lane Lane's like, you know, buffed out over here. I mean, have they taken a notice on what you've been able to do in the weight room? Yeah, they, they, they'll they see me. They're always walking by like, yeah, Lane getting that work in, you know, <laughs> that's that type of stuff. But they notice it, yeah. For the college aspect of things, what do, what do you got to improve on to get ready for college? Because, I mean, when you take that leg brace off and you run for the first time, it's going to feel like, jello a little bit yeah. in your leg i mean how do you get your mind right knowing that that's the next avenue for you and you want to be ready to play once mm-hmm. you hit the ground running as to whatever college you chose to play for yeah so it's just when, once i get out of the boot and be able to start running it's just training speed at that point and i'll still be lifting doing all my other stuff but mostly speed and agility training is what i'll be really focused on because i i'm re- probably really slow right now as you can imagine Break it down for me. You get injured in the in the scrimmage. What's going through your mind, and how do you battle through all this adversity? Because, you know, I mean, this is your senior year. A mm. lot of kids, they, they can be devastated and be like, ah, this is maybe not for me, I guess. But, I mean, how do, how do you keep your focus so tunnel vision on what you want to do in college? Because I'm assuming when, when you found out that it's a season-ending injury, that crushed you like none other. Yeah, so uh, my parents helped me a lot through that. You know, seeing it more as an opportunity, less than a, uh, like a, I don't know what you call it. it m- helped me seeing it as an opportunity more than like, oh, I'm hurt, I'm done, you know, because I can, I can still get better. Like, I'm still lifting, so I guess it's another part that I can get better at. But seeing it as an opportunity is what I've been mainly focused on. How long until you decide to make that decision of what school you're going to go to? Probably within... I would say between now and probably November is when I'm going to try to make a decision. Is it difficult to go through that decision right now? Uh, Not really, but, you know, just seeing how seeing how it progresses. You've told me about charting plays and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about the idea of maybe becoming a coach? You know, I have thought about that and it's pretty fun up there, but 
I actually have thought about it, but I haven't taken too big of a dive into it. A lot of players that I've spoken to over the years, when they get an injury like yours and they go into the booth or they're helping out coaches mm-hmm. with practice, they, they learn a different side of the game. Have you been able to grasp that and to pick up something that maybe you didn't have before because of your see, uh, the way you're seeing it differently now? Yeah, I have. Uh, the way I watch film and stuff, like that's completely changed the way I've seen it. Definitely, it's definitely helped me. And it slows down. It slows the game down quite a bit when you're up there because you can see everything and and it just slows everything down. But yeah, it's definitely helped me. So finally, I mean, would you? I know that you want to be out there playing, but in some ways, is this injury a blessing in disguise because you're seeing the film, and the next time you're going to be seeing film is when you're going to be playing in college, where everybody got recruited. They're all talented players. I mean, do you think you'll have a somewhat of a better edge because you have had this time to sit down and reflect and look at everything that you're looking on tape? Yeah, I, I would see it as a blessing, but uh, yeah, I think it gives me more of an advantage because um, when I'll be playing, like. I can see it the way I seen it when I was hurt. You know, it'll help me, and I'll be ready to go. So, I want to thank Lane Condry, senior linebacker for Broken Arrow. As we get set, we'll visit with head coach Josh Blankenship a little bit more on Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib, as we break down Westman. <laughs> Life happens in a hurry. Our money experts will help you keep up. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. At Ascension St. John, you'll find advanced heart care, brain and spine care, and personalized cancer care. And we excel just as much in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football. As we are joined by head coach Josh Blankenship, I'm Dan Hawk. Coach Westmore on tap this week. They uh, narrowly took it down Jinx. Mm -hmm. Uh, What did you see on tape for that one as we begin a Thursday night showdown? Seems like everybody has got everybody back from last year. Westmore, a very, very dangerous team last year. Um, very big, very athletic. Um, and then they seem like they've got everybody back playing better than they even did last year. And then they've added a couple kids that moved in, uh, at quarterback, receiver, and then I believe they're both playing some DB. Um, huge offensive line. Uh, the entire team is very athletic. Um, that quarterback um, – can go I mean he is dynamic and electric Um, the guy he throws it to uh, receiver I think one's committed to Houston one's committed to OU so two um, very deserving D1 guys Um, and we'll have to contain them Um, we'll we'll have our hands full um, which we do every week in our league but uh, we're looking forward to it Um, I think our biggest challenge is is the travel you know we've had road games but this is a true road game going over the west side so you got about two and a half hour drive on a bus and uh, you got different officiating crews over on the west side, so it's different. Um, you know, so all those things are a big deal to me. So traveling well, um, attention to detail on how we travel and what we do uh, in that whole process to put ourselves in a position to go play well. I'm glad you brought that up about the first true road trip mm-hmm. of the season. Because, yes, we play Owasso and we play Union, but they're pretty much in-town games right. or surrounding city games. Do you put on a film to like you know mold this team together? Like when I played college baseball, as Band of Brothers, do you guys do that, or do you just let them focus in on themselves? Do you go over the game tape? I and mean, what is that bus trip like? Yeah, we do a we do a lot right before we get on the bus. So we do a, you know meetings, walkthroughs, um, and then for the first chunk of the bus ride, we you know we've got rules on how you uh, how you are not going to be a distraction for others on the bus. So it's it's quiet, it's private, it's personal. Um, you know, we're fortunate to be able to get enough buses where we can spread out a little bit so they're not all crammed in. Um, we want them to be comfortable. Uh, I don't mind if they're resting and sleeping. And then we've got on our a very specific itinerary about the last 20 minutes. Um, you know, they're all to wake up, pull out their notes, start focusing, start thinking about their, their, their jobs, uh, the game plan, what we're getting ready to do. And then we've got a little guided meditation that we usually do when we're not on the road. It's, you know, it's in our, in our own facility. Um, when we go on these long trips, it's the last 10 minutes of the drive so that when we get off the bus, we're dialed in and ready to move into the, the itinerary that we follow when we get to the game. I'm glad you brought up meditation because I know mm-hmm. you're very uh, focused in on that kind of mentality mm-hmm. of coaching. When when you get the boys meditated for the first time, when they're learning the process of what you're trying to approach with them, what's the takeaway from that? Uh, I think they just learned the the value in it. Um, it's mainly just positive affirmations. It's, uh, uh, you know, just guided uh, self-talk, 
uh, stuff really that's a, like everything else, it's a tool that they can take and use on their own for anything. Um, there's nothing magical about it. You know, it's just, uh, it's another piece that we, we make sure and express the importance of. And, you know, when you're dealing with 14 through 18 year olds, sometimes teaching them how to focus, how to think, um, is a huge part of it. You know, we talk about <laughs> even down to the, what your mental process is between plays, um, and those steps that, that you follow there. So, there's very few areas that we don't hit on, and uh, that's one piece that we started, uh, you know, when we first got here, um, and the kids embraced it. You know, I was really pleased to see that. There wasn't any kind of, you know, this is goofy, uh, any kind of resistance. It was just another piece of what we do, just like training in the weight room, just like practice on the field, just like treatment in the training room, uh, just like ice baths. It's just like hydration. It's just another piece, and so the, the guys are all in. This Westmore team, you kind of touched on the offense. What are we seeing out of them on defense? A huge uh, athletic. You know, they, they're going to be hard to get around on an edge. You know, they're going to be hard to get past. Um, they're very fast, uh, physical. So we'll have to play sound football and be efficient. Um, we've got to stay out of third and longs. You know, that's, that's our Achilles right now is if we're not effective on first and second down, uh, third and long is just not our strong suit. Um, so... Being more effective, uh, you know, on our openers and then, then me selecting better play choices on second down, get us into manageable third downs and then sustaining drives and trying to find little windows where maybe we can score from a distance, you know, instead of relying on us to dink and dunk all the way down. Um, you know, all those things, we're looking for answers to get get rhythm. Um, but we're, we're actually playing good football. Um, we've got to just take it to another level against another good opponent on the road. So it's it's still... There's a lot of opponents. There's the road. There's Westmore. Um, it's still about us. You know, it's about us doing what we do and doing it to the highest level possible. One final one for me. Do mm -hmm. you wish, I know you have no control over this, but do you wish these games could be on Friday nights because that's historically what it is for high school football? If, it, if you had a crystal yeah. ball, I know you can't change any of it, but do you wish all across high school football they were just played on Fridays? You know, I'm, I'm a routine guy, and I think football guys are routine guys, so I'm always in favor of, you know, once you start the season, every Monday being the exact same, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every day being the exact same until till it's over. Uh, so I'm always, you know, if you make me pick one, I'm always in favor of the routine. I think we think the exact same way. <laughs> Coach, I appreciate you stopping by. You have been watching Inside Tiger Football with head coach Josh Blankenship and myself brought to you by Rib Crib. Next time you will see us, we'll be at Westmore with Madison Dildine on the sideline and Devin Johnson inside the booth with me. Go Tigers.